Thank you very much. Further debate, the member from Mississauga, Streetsville. Well, thank you, Speaker. Um, it's my pleasure to rise in the House today to speak on uh, today's motion introduced by our esteemed member from Barry Innisville. Um, speaker, I don't doubt for one moment that all members of this House wish to represent their constituents and their needs. We were all elected to ensure that the business of this House, that is, passed legislation to improve the lives of all Ontarians. Our government was elected with a mandate to build better transit, which affects many members on the opposition and will allow them to get from point A to point B in a much better way. As we're going through such a trying time with COVID-19, allowing the Standing Committee on Legislative Assembly to study Bill 175, Connecting People to Home Care Act 2020, it should be at the top of mind for the members of the opposition. And as I said earlier, I truly, truly believe that all of us in this House are here to represent their constituents. And I'd like to take a moment just to speak a little bit about the areas of people in the community that have really stepped up during this very difficult time. I worked with some many different community agencies and organizations, and we've helped raise funds for, an example, Yogi Divine Society. They've been providing groceries for families and international students, and we've donated food to the Eden Food for Change uh, with Global Medic. Um, Queen's Manor event space, for example, gave the food bank uh, a, a chunk of their space so they could store a lot of their items that are used for winter time. They've taken that there to open that space up for those needy families that need to have that right now. Uh, and I think it's just been amazing on some of the work that a lot of the people have been doing here. The Canada India Foundation, I've joined them numerous times to provide and continue to provide meals to our frontline uh, healthcare workers all across the GTA. They've included um, hospitals, long-term care facilities. They've been to the police and, and, and gave it to them, the paramedics. And we really want to thank them for their ongoing services. And as we heard earlier today, there's many members across this house that have done so much work during this time. And my esteemed member right here from Mississauga Lakeshore, he has done an unbelievable amount of work each and every day, not once, but many times. He's gone out with people in the truck to the Ontario Food Terminal, picked up food, delivered to food banks, delivered to organizations. And it is, it's just been so reassuring and so comforting to see members of this house do some great work. I remember here from Mississauga Malton. He's been working with Sidon Food Bank, <laughs> delivering meals with them continually, each and every day. And, and it's times like this where we look around in our communities and, and where sometimes people were very affluent before, were very needy right now, and vice versa. It's very, very, very difficult. So to see a lot of people just around this house and the community come together to support each other is very comforting. And, and it's times like that where I'm so proud that I'm a Canadian and I'm an Ontarian, and I live in a place where we don't have to worry about where the next meal's coming from, because somebody will be there to help. So thank you to each and everyone here that's been doing that. But speaker also, my staff and I continue to support and work with, of course, our constituents. And in order for us to fully represent those we serve, we need to also be here in this House to introduce, to debate, and to pass legislation on important issues. Speaker, earlier we heard from our House leader about the work we continue to do whilst we're not in the House. And I'll give you a small sample of the work and the roundtables that I've been hosting over the last two months. Initially, right after the House rose, uh, I, I hosted a roundtable with the Mississauga Board of Trade with the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. And at that time, we had no idea what was going to be happening uh, with our businesses. Uh, and he was there and comforting to those businesses. And they're from a very wide range of different types of businesses, large and small. And, uh, and, and it was something they needed to hear from the minister at that time. And since then, since we announced the Joint Economic Recovery Committee, I hosted another one with the Mississauga Board of Trade and, and heard from them. And I've asked them to let me know and let our government know what they could be doing in their industries to allow us to reopen. Uh, for example, I've, I've talked to barbershops, I've talked to faith communities, just many different areas on, on what they could be doing for us to be able to 
uh, with the health and safety, of course, of our constituents to be able to open up again. Um, I moderated a conference call with the, our Minister of Tourism for those who are in the tourism industry, and we know, we all know, that that's an industry that's been suffering uh, dramatically. Um, there's no flights going, people have only been receiving vouchers and not refunds. Uh, it really has been a very difficult time for anyone in the tourism industry right now. But they did give us some fantastic feedback. They came back to us with ideas and solutions, which is what we really need to be saying. It's not just the complaints, but real, real solutions. So I really want to thank the minister for the great work she's been doing and is continuing to do. We hosted another one with her on um, uh, high performance sports. Uh, and that was very successful to listen to on ways and we can try and find ways that we can reopen uh, those in the sports and fitness industry. Minister, speaker, I also, uh, one morning, we, it was very, it's quite difficult because of the time difference uh, to continue to still work, do the work in, in our Office of Ministry of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade, where I was talking with a member of our trade office in India with a company who's interested in investing right here in Ontario, a very large investment. So we spoke numerous times, and sometimes it was seven in the morning for me here and late at night for them, and sometimes it was vice versa. But we do it. We do it because we know that we need that investment and we need that um, confidence in Ontario for those people to come here and invest. And I spend a lot of time uh, working with people in the media to make sure that the information that's getting out to the public on COVID-19 is accurate. It changes, not just daily, it sometimes changes by the hour. So we need to make sure that we are all up to date on the information coming out from our government, from the Chief Medical Officer of Health, and that we're, we're passing that information on to the public in an accurate and in, and, and in an important manner. So that's uh, something that's been continually going on each and every day. Um, I've been working a lot with students and families and, and finding and, and just helping them uh, maneuver things like some of the government supports that are out there right now. We have the CERB, we have the wage subsidy, OC, <laughs> OCCRA as we call it, different loan programs. And it can be extremely confusing whether you're an individual or a business. Um, and and there's, always, there's always going to be someone who doesn't fit into any of those categories. Each individual, each family, each business is very unique. And there have been for, the, uh, for a lot of it, it's some small businesses that just did not fit into any of those categories. And, it's, and, I, and I agree for the member from Sudbury that there are going to be some that's falling through the cracks and we really have to be there for them. Uh, and I really want to, I really, really want to thank our Premier who has been working with the federal government day in and day out on talking about supports for those people in Ontario and across this country, quite frankly, and, and really pushing to make sure that we do get those supports for everyone who needs them. Uh, so I really want to thank him. I want to thank our Minister of Health and our Minister of Long-Term Care, who've really been out there working for all of us. And it's, it's been comforting knowing that they are there all the time. Um, our, the six MPPs from Mississauga, we, we, we talk ourselves amongst ourselves at least on a weekly basis. We have a call, we talk about what's happening, and uh, we, we had we hosted a virtual town hall with our Minister of Finance uh, to talk about you know, the industry and any, anything. Anyone was able to come in and call in and ask questions. And, and we, we actually received a lot of feedback. It wasn't just questions of us. They were giving us feedback on things that where we as a government could help. Uh, and I know our, ministry, our Minister of uh, Finance would, really took that information and we've moved with a lot of those. We have a weekly update with the Trillium Health Partners, uh, not just the Mississauga MPs, but also our esteemed mem MP, uh, Member of Provincial Parliament from Etobicoke Lakeshore because one of the, um, one of the hospitals uh, falls in her riding as, as well. So they, every Friday, give us an update on capacity and the patients and how many are in ICU and how many are on ventilators and where we are on um, potentially reopening elective surgeries. So we're up to date on that information so we can take that information back again to the public and reassure people that, that we're there, we're working for them and we're available. We are always available for our constituents. But I also, uh, Speaker, sp I've spent a lot of time uh, speaking to companies who've really, really stepped up to the plate during this time. Uh, for example, uh, to build ventilators and personal protective equipment. I want to talk about a company called Medtronic uh, in the south of Brampton. Um, and one of, the th one of the things, it's a global company, and one of the things they build are ventilators. 
so what they did, because the ventilator actually manufactured in Ireland, they had to uh, prioritize where the ventilators, where they were making 300 a week, they're now making 1,000. So they had to prioritize, prioritize globally where they were sending them. So of course, it was first um, Asia, Africa, then Europe, now, South, now North America. So they weren't able to, to meet our demand quickly enough. So what they did, they gave their intellectual property to us and allowed companies to take the specifications of the ventilator and build them right here. And Danby have taken that and worked with a number of other companies to build those ventilators. And they've been built and they're at the bedside of hospitals ready to use if needed. So, you know, th when we look at how the people of Ontario and the companies of Ontario have really stepped up to the plate, it has been quite amazing watching all of this happen. I also, um, I, know, I know everybody probably in, in the House, all members, have heard from constituents um, about uh, only being able to fill a prescription for 30 days rather than a 90-day supply. So we, we know that supply can be an issue. I actually took time out uh, to speak to Jim Keon, and he's the president of the Canadian Generic Pharmaceutical Association, to talk about the drug supply. And I asked, do we really have a drug supply shortage on generic drugs. Is, is there a real issue out there? Is the, you know, it, it's unfortunate we're asking our seniors to not go out, yet they're only able to get a 30 second, uh, uh, sorry, 30 day supply. So now they're having to go three times where they would only normally go once for that, that supply. So he said, we don't have a shortage right now, but the, the issue that we face is the, the logistics. So not all of our generics are manufactured here in, in Canada. So if it's coming from China, for example, or from India, there's that logistical issue of, first, are they willing to let the supply out of the country? Uh, and second, how many flights are coming out of there? And the very few flights that are coming out of there to secure that space on that flight to be able to get those drugs out. So as of now, thankfully, we don't have an issue, but we had to, we had to have that supply only at 30 days just in case. Uh, and it really has been uh, difficult for many, and I've had a lot of seniors who have contacted my office with this issue alone, because it's not, we're not talking about one drug in some circumstances. For many seniors and for many people, it could be two, three or more drugs as well. So that was something that uh, I, I wanted to reach out and talk to him about. I also held uh, virtual meetings and conversations, for example, with Bayer. They're partnering with the Public Health Research Institute uh, to launch a trial to prevent health decline during COVID-19 patients. Um, and they have a study of chloroquine, azithromycin, and a beta um, which could potentially uh, prevent hospital admissions and the need for ventilation. So for those of us who may get COVID-19, um, to take that in an early stage, and the, the early trials are looking very promising on that. And, and, there's, and, and we've heard from many different trials that are taking place across Canada right now, here in Ontario and Canada, but globally that are looking very, very um, great potential. They're showing great potential, but we are in early days. We're, we're, we don't have a vaccine yet. We don't have a cure, but we're, we're looking to those in, those in the industry to really to work hard for us and, and to try and find a way uh, to, to help us all in COVID-19. I also held um, a virtual roundtable with Life Science Ontario on how the sector can contribute to Ontario's post-COVID economic recovery. And, and, and in that included pharma, medical technology, regenerative medicine, venture capital, diagnostics. And I truly believe that we need to work diligently with the sector to build a much longer term strategy. We need to learn from COVID-19 and what we faced and what could potentially happen in another pandemic and be prepared. Uh, we've talked a lot about personal protective equipment. I don't, I don't think many people in this house heard, heard that term that much before COVID-19, but it's something we talk about each and every day. And now we have to understand as, as we're reopening the economy, how important it is to have that PPE uh, for everyone. And we're not talking just N95 masks, but the masks that some of us have, well, I think everyone in this house has worn a mask today at some point. 
But now as we're opening businesses, as we're going to the stores, as, as businesses are going to be working, ma uh, manufacturing is going to be open, factories are going to be open, people are going to need masks, gloves, goggles, uh, visors, whatever it may be. So we need a much larger supply. So we're looking to the to industry to build that and to build that supply right here in Ontario. And I think it's really important. Um, I spent a, quite a bit of time picking up and delivering masks myself to hospitals, long-term care facilities, and to community members. Um, <laughs> I, even, I even, soon after COVID-19 began, I picked up the phone and I called a company called Kruger and, uh, to inquire about the possible shortage of what was important to all of us, which was toilet tissue. Uh, so, we'd heard a lot about hoarding taking place as soon as COVID-19 began. So, I called them, they're in my writing, and uh, I had a great conversation with them. I said, so do we have an issue with toilet tissue? And they said, the normal general supply, there's absolutely no issue. The problem that we have is people are hoarding it, they're buying it, taking it off the shelves, which means some people are not getting the supply. Anyway, I think, I think we're okay for now uh, on toilet tissue, so that's really important. And I actually spoke to them just a couple of weeks ago, so our supply still is in, in good shape. Um, I have spent time speaking with members, fit, fitness and gym leaders, barbers, faith leaders, uh, faith leaders from every denomination. For a lot of people, being able to go to church, to the temple, to the mosque, to the synagogue, sometimes that's the only social interaction that they have. So for them to be able to, to, to visit those places it's so important. So what do we as a government, what does our chief medical officer of health, how can we, how can we reopen these institutions uh, so that people can once again get back to practicing their faith uh, together as a community? So I've asked, you know, they've been coming back to me with some great ideas and great solutions on the one way in, one way out, on having two, three congregations where they'd normally only have one. So it, it's really heartwarming when you see people come together and bring you some really great information. I've had uh, conversations with our Peel Police. Uh, I had uh, just a couple of days ago with the Deputy Chief Mark Andrews, uh, who gave me an update on um, where we've been hearing a lot about domestic abuse going up. However, but because people are stuck at home, sometimes there's no access to a phone where they can actually call for help. So, you know, there are a lot of different sides of, of what we're hearing. Uh, Neha Sharma, pharmacy, she has a compounding license. In her own pharmacy, she made sanitizer of 95% alcohol, great quality. Uh, we took them ourselves and delivered them to our great paramedics who we've been talking about today a lot and uh, to a long-term care home in my riding. I spent time soon after being elected and I shadowed some PSWs in a long-term care center. Uh, and I can't tell you how um, I understood how difficult it was, the job that they do and the immense amount of respect that we all have for our PSWs. And I think there's a lot of work that we can do, we need to do and we must do to support those in that industry. And I know there's not much time left, so I'm going to be very quickly, but speaker, I just want to say again that I'm so proud of my colleagues in this house, the work that we've all been doing in our writings. Um, I know that we're, we've just come through also Ramadan and Eid and the Muslim community have been really stepping up to the plate and supporting the community with food deliveries and uh, helping out our food banks, I know that. Uh, and, and I've just mentioned some of the few virtual meetings that I have done, um, and I have and I will continue to do, but Mr. Speaker, we must always continue to govern to help get through this difficult time, and we will get through it, but I do ask the opposition to work with us for the benefit of all of the people in Ontario. So once again, to all the members of this House, thank you to all the work that all of you are doing to support all of your communities, and thank you for the opportunity for me to arise today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Further debate?